Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we are going to look at the Big River Dry Backpack from the company C2 Summit. Now you might not realize this if you've been watching my channel, but C2 Summit is a company whose products I really heavily rely on. Most specifically when it's really, really cold. I'm talking like zero Fahrenheit. In that range, I leverage their sleeping bags and their cold, cold weather sleeping bags to keep me comfortable, but more importantly, to keep me safe. So today, looking at one of their products, again, this here, a dry backpack. So as you take a look, this is fully packaged up. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna get this out of the packaging. We're gonna take a look at it together, get a first impression. Then I'm gonna bring it out with me for some practical field use, putting this to the test in a certain amount of ways. If I can fully test this in the field, I will. If not, we're gonna come back here and finalize that testing. Then we'll come back to the studio and I'll give you my final thoughts. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at c to summit who did provide this for review. And so when I say something like a brand or a company has products that I absolutely trust and rely on, never mind the fact that when it's literally, and I'm gonna say pretty much a survival situation like sub freezing and below zero conditions, when I say something like that, it really does mean that I trust the brand as a whole, that I trust the quality, that I trust the performance, and that is absolutely the case and what I am going to hope to see here with this Big River Dry Backpack. Now, keep in mind the fact that this is the 50 liter version. This is also in what they're calling their Picante colorway. So they do offer black, they do offer the Picante, which for me, and I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not a huge fan of loud colors. You typically see me using subdued colors, colors that are going to blend into the background. However, what I'm going to say about this is keep in mind the fact that this is a dry bag. What if I'm using this in a canoe? What if I'm using this in a kayak? What if I flip said canoe or flip said kayak? Well, at that point, do you want to see your gear? Do you want to see it quickly and pick up on the color and be able to find it and get to it before it floats completely down the river? Absolutely. So having something that's bright, that's a little bit loud, that catches attention for this purpose is really, really important. I'm not going to say critical, but it's very important. And so again, this is the 50 liter version. There is also a 75 liter version. Now a backpack like this, uh, you know, I don't expect that I'm gonna carry my gear terribly far. So either way, either the 50 liter or the 75, I, I don't really think that's gonna matter. In fact, the 75 would have been cool in the ability just to add more gear. But I try to anticipate what am I going to use this for? How much fabric do I want? How much extra volume do I need? And will this be suitable for those needs? And I can tell you what I'm hoping to achieve, and I'm probably not going to for this particular video, but what I hope to achieve is getting out on my local river much, much more. And most specifically, I would say kayaking. If I can get into that, which I hope to do, I will need something like this. And I need it to be efficient. It can't be huge. It can't be oversized. It has to fit within my means. So not having something that's overly large, I think will work to my advantage. Now at this point, let's go through all of the features. And so we'll start here on the front and the first thing is the fabric. So this here, this is a 420D nylon fabric. This is going to be abrasion and puncture resistant. It's going to be strong. Now this, of course, having a roll top design, a uh, good design and a dry bag is going to have a fantastic seal on top. So you'll notice not only do you end up with your reinforcement, but here right away, 
this is actually a little bit rubberized. So as you roll this all together and as you press this together, it's going to help to seal. It's going to help everything to grab. And then you're going to have a nice, and again, this is a name brand, seemingly Wu Jin Duraflex buckle. So good positive click, good positive buckles and just fitting together nicely. So good quality and name brand products as you get into this so like for example as i mentioned the Wu Jin duraflex buckles a wonderfully contoured harness system and on top of that which you don't usually see in something like this this appears to have adjustability and most specifically with the fact that you have load lifter straps which helps to keep your entire load nice and tight and tidy to your back that will definitely come into play with a very active scenario and something where you want that bag nice and tight to your back so it's not flopping around maintains a nice low profile you end up with an adjustable sternum strap so you can see a number of locations along that webbing so we'll size this for me just keep in mind the fact that i am about six foot one about 175 pounds so as you see how this fits me that will come into play you also have an adjustable hip belt so your waist belt here nice wide fabric so here 38 millimeters, roughly an inch and a half, and again, those nice quality Wu Jin Duraflex buckles. Branded with the Sea to Summit logo there, so that's nice, and again, a nice positive click. Now the bottom, triple coated, so you can see a rubberized coating right on the bottom, and it's oval, which will help this to sit nice and flat down on a surface. Hopefully this bag will sit upright, and that's going to help minimize water penetration if this is down on the ground versus the rest of the fabric, but I do expect the rest of the fabric to hold up nicely. Now just real quick, as we get into the inside of the bag, so you can see nice large cavernous bag, everything seam sealed. So all of the seams are seam sealed and taped. Every penetration done nicely, good and flat. Now one thing I can tell you is inferior seam tape can have ripples, it can have gaps, and it can leave this subject to water penetration. So when I look down inside and I see everything nice and flat, properly adhered, no corners to snag and peel up, round it out, they are paying attention to the details and that is absolutely fantastic. The other thing that I like is the inside of the bag is bright white, bright, bright white. The ability to see easily all the way down and inside. And if you watch a lot of people with reviews, sometimes it's really hard to see down to the bottom of the bag and especially with limited light. But here, that is very easy. So a nice bright white interior that aids in your ability to find your gear. But other than that, not a heck of a lot going on the inside. Again, your nice contoured shoulder straps going up over the top. Very, very nice. Flipping this over to the front again. Just a final little detail. Of course, you see the logos in bright orange. But as we turn the bag to the side, you do end up with additional lashing points. So this sort of ladder style lashing, that is great. Gives you the ability to clip things to the bag. Also gives you the ability to grab on if you need to. And that is absolutely crazy where it says load rated, maximum load 220 pounds. Like that's serious. So in other words, let's just say for example, I was wearing this bag and I got dumped in the river and somebody had to haul me out and they were just grabbing at whatever they could grab at. If they were able to get a hold of this, I mean, it should not rip, it should not tear and somebody should be able to grab a hold of this and haul me up into a boat back onto the shore or something like that. So I think that's pretty cool very heavy duty stitching here in appropriate locations. So again, just paying attention to some of the details. And these are used essentially to clip down the lid. So once you get everything rolled up and tidy, folded over the top, that does come down to here. So on both sides, you end up with a male and female, which I do like because 
there is an alternate way to leverage the bag if you're careful. You could leverage this potentially to lash something on the outside. And the nice thing is still leverage the roll top design on top to buckle that together. I do that from time to time if I need to. And it doesn't really work with some bags when you end up with male to male or female to female on top of the bag. So the fact that they went with the male female setup on the roll top as well as the male female setup on your lashing points, that's a big advantage and I do really like that. Taking a quick minute, just getting a little bit of gear in here, just enough to bulk this out. You can see here a fairly substantially sized sleeping bag which slides easily down and into place. Again, I'm basically just leveraging this for a little bit of bulk at the moment. This bag does tend to want to roll towards the harness system. So again, here's your rubber and everything folding in. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Everything rolling in nicely and then bending down over the top. Again, leveraging the side straps. So the female on the cover down to the male here and then the opposite on the other side. So on this side, you'll see again, you end up with your male going down to the female clipping in nicely, everything tidy. And of course you can cinch everything down, leveraging the webbing. So at this point, now that everything is nice and tidy, this bag looking really good. And how does it fit? Well, again, I am six foot one, about 175 pounds at the time of this video, getting this fit out. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to adjust the waist belt, the shoulder straps, everything from the sternum and the load lifters. So it'll just take me a quick minute to get this all unpackaged. It did come nice and tidy from the factory. And in terms of the waist belt, more than enough webbing. Of course, this is going to be unpadded. So as you take a look, there's no padding. I would not necessarily recommend this for long duration hikes, uh, nor something like a backpacking scenario. I wouldn't think that's really the intent, but if you're gonna do something like canoeing, rafting, portage, boating, uh, maybe winter activities like some basic snowshoeing, this would be fantastic. Getting this generally into place, feeling pretty good. Now the load lifters, again, taking advantage and cinching that up, getting everything nice and tidy to my back. That fabric you can see pulling in is going to keep this nice and firm and secure and right into place without this really rocking and rolling. I like that design. Notice how that fabric pulls nice and tight right to my shoulders. That is absolutely gonna keep this bag pinned between my shoulder blades, maintain a low profile. And again, especially if you're doing something that requires a lot of quick movements or activity, that bag is right with me. So that's nice. Generally speaking, in terms of this fit, appropriate for my torso height, seemingly just about right and you can see the sternum strap already from the factory pretty much in the right place i won't mess with that at all i like the fact that i have a little bit of extra webbing if i had something like a knife a dive knife or even some sort of a survival knife that could be important i would typically clip that to my bag so having a nice like stainless steel little knife right there that's gonna be fantastic. So I can tell you, I will absolutely be doing that. And so now at this point, I am pretty much ready to hit the road. So let's get outside and put this to some practical testing.
So, all right, guys, back from field use testing with the Big River Dry Bag. All in all, fantastic experience. I've enjoyed this quite a bit. Now, back in the studio here, you can see I've trapped a volume of air inside. I'm basically doing this to simulate and sort of demonstrate the overall, I would say, seal on the lid. So you can see here with this volume of air in here, as I press down, pretty good i mean that's a pretty solid seal now there is one little thing that has developed and that is i have a bit of i would say a penetration on the bottom you can see i was in a number of different areas a number of sort of different scenery and different sort of adventures and well in my adventure unfortunately i seem to have maybe either put this down on something somewhat sharp or I stepped on the bag on top of a rock so listening in here right here there's definitely a hole and I think that hole won't really let water in but the reality is over time uh, it certainly could open up a little bit more. I mean, in general use, this is not going to be a problem, but I think it will impact the overall complete waterproof nature if this was submerged. You're not truly supposed to submerge this bag completely, but if you were to submerge it, that might be a little bit of a liability. But even at that, let's bring it up to the tub and let's give it a try. And so now you're gonna see at least enough water for general submergence. You can see this still has that same volume of air in there. 
So simulating having the bag shut, having some gear inside, and as I go to submerge this, nice and buoyant, so that's cool. But as I press down, at least getting enough water over the top of the roll pack, I'll spin it this way, and you can see the top of that roll pack completely submerged here. Now this is the one section where if I was going to have a problem, it would be on this back side. And as I press down here, you can see the fine little bubbles. And you can hear it. So unfortunately, this section right here has absolutely developed a hole and clearly that's a little bit of an issue. And as you take a look at this here, you can see the scuff on the bottom of the bag. So this abrasion right here is enough to allow air out. And the question is, is it enough to let water in? I mean, you saw that submersion. Let's just say I was in a canoe and I flipped and I had this on my back. Well, at this point, would this have been able to protect my gear? Yes, it is enough to protect my gear. From what I can tell, it is still perfectly dry. So uh, no water inside. I mean, a couple of drops from me splashing around as I opened up the bag and maybe from the roll top, but not really. So the seal on top of the bag absolutely doing its job. And then the hole does not seem to have impacted the integrity at all, at least from what I can tell. And so to me, that's a good sign because the last thing I want to find is that, you know, beating this up a little bit is really going to cause a problem in the overall integrity of its water resistance. And so generally speaking, this definitely did its job and did it well. You can see at this point, now that I've submerged this, the actual ripstop on the outside does show that it's absorbed water. However, on the inside, that liner is basically impenetrable to the water, at least for that submersion, which was probably about a minute. And then of course, on top of the fact that I got that roll top underneath the water surface. So that was a good test. And then on top of that, of course, that tiny little hole. So all in all, this definitely did its job. And so again, the 50 liter Big River dry backpack from Sea to Summit. As I mentioned early on in this video, Sea to Summit is a company whose products I absolutely have to trust. And in this case, it performed. So I am very happy. This is a cool bag, uh, very, very minimalistic. I mean, very straightforward, but you can see it performed awesome for my waterborne and sort of daily needs out on the water, having an adventure, keeping my stuff dry, safe, comfortable, tight to my back, definitely sweet. And so again, to the people at Sea to Summit, I would like to say thank you very much for the opportunity to review this. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you liked what you saw. I hope you found that a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.